Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Tehseen Fatma and currently I'm working as an associate professor at Dow College of Biotechnology, Dow University of Health Sciences. Today's lecture is about a conserved process that every living cell undergoes. The process is by the name of DNA replication. The contents of today's lecture include the general features of the conserved method of DNA replication, the template model that is used for the process, and the general process of the DNA replication in whole, including the molecular players involved in the process. We are also going to discuss the differences between the uh, prokaryotic as well as a eukaryotic DNA replication. And by the end of today's lecture, the students should be able to gain knowledge regarding the conserved process that is vital for the survival of a living system that is the semi-conservative method of DNA replication that uh, molecular players that are involved in the process including all the necessary and as well as the accessory proteins and the enzymes into, uh, included into the process. We are going to talk about some of the general features of the DNA replication process, primarily the process of DNA replication being semi-conservative, that is holding a part of the parental DNA as a part of the template, the process of replication following the Watson and Crick base, uh, base pairing, the replication form uh, for being asymmetrical, that would be discussed more in detail and along with the differences in the prokaryotic and eukaryotic systems, and also the need for the five prime to three prime direction of the DNA replication and the importance of the accuracy that is required along with the process of DNA replication. The DNA replication is a copying mechanism that follows the Watson and Crick base pairing. The concept of the Watson and Crick base pairing follows the basic norms that adenine pairing with a thymine and guanine pairing with a cytosine. The process is termed as a semi-conservative replication as if we could consider the presented model as a string of ribbons. In here, the blue strands refer to the parental strands that can open up. The method of unzipping or opening of the two strands is usually or best referred as a zipper. The zipper model, when opened up, refers or exposes the nucleotide sequences that could be present in varying orders, subject to the part of the DNA that is exposed, the gene to be sequenced, and the organism that is targeted or is studied at the point of interaction. The double helix that acts as a zipper unzips, starting at one end and exposing the nucleotides. The nucleotides that are exposed, they serve themselves as a template and allow or guide the nucleotide to be added in from the pool forming the daughter strand. The nucleotides that are presented from the pool are expected to be present before the start of the process. If this model is correct, which provided it is, the each daughter strand should contain one parental nucleotide strand and a neulosynthesized daughter strand that is referred at the bottom part of the replication fork in here, in which the blue ribbon refers to the parental strand, whereas the yellow ribbon refers to the daughter strand. And as we would see, every single template or parental template exposing the nucleotide ends, resulting in the formation of two daughter strands that have been replicated using the semi-conservative mode of DNA replication. The concept of semi-conservative DNA replication was initially proven and coined in 1958 by two young scientists, Matthew Messelson and Franklin Stoll, and that is how the experiment is referred as a messelson stoll experiment. They set out the discoveries to find out the possibilities that correctly describe the process of DNA replication. The idea was to allow the parental DNA molecules containing the nucleotides of one density to replicate in the medium containing nucleotides of different density. For the, if the DNA replication was semi-conservative, the daughter molecules should be half old and half new and therefore should reflect the densities of different molecules. For the purpose, they grew the E. coli cells in a medium containing the heavy isotopes of the nitrogen referred as N15 and in the figure, these are referred as the red strands. 
rather than the usual nitrogen which is considered as n14 which is referred as the blue strands this isotope was inserted into the nitrogenous bases during the biochemical process of the adenine and nitro during the biochemical process of the purine and pyrimidine synthetic metabolism and it were incorporated into the newly synthesized dna strands after many cell divisions in the 15n nitrogen the dna of the cells were labeled with the heavy isotopes referred as in here the cells were then removed from the 15n nitrogen and put into the n14 nitrogen after or for the course of one to two rounds of cell division after the first round of cell division the samples were taken and dna was isolated from each sample the scientists were able to distinguish the dna of different densities based on the concept of the cesium chloride density gradient the concept basically works that if the cesium chloride is spun in a centrifuge at the tremendously high speeds that is approximately 50000 rpm for many hours the cesium and chloride ions tend to be pushed by centrifugal force toward the bottom of the tube ultimately a gradient of ions is established in the tube with the highest concentration or the density at the bottom the dna centrifuge with the cesium chloride forms a band at the position identical with its density in the gradient dna of different densities in a similar way would form bands at different positions depending on the density they acquire cells initially grown in the heavy isotopic 15n showed the position at the highest density or at the bottom of the gradient tube only cells that were grown um or the dna that was collected after the first round of uh, first round of replication the cells uh, or or the one that they have been grown into the n14 for one round of generation they showed the cells of intermediate density and that basically refers that half of their strand contained the heavier isotopic nitrogen and half of their strands contained the nitrogen that was n14 uh, after growing the cells for isotopic nitrogen for further more generations it was found that as the cells continue to grow the the quantity of the heavier nitrogen as well as the intermediate nitrogen seems to fall down and the quantities of the regular nitrogen keep on increasing as referred by the left form or left part of the f3 generation or the third round of replication that basically shows that although the template molecule contained the heavier nitrogenous isotope it contained only to the restricted rounds of replication and as the cell continues to grow every daughter cell formed as a result or the daughter strand formed as a result of newer round of replication serves itself as a template and thus produces the bluer strands or the strands containing the n14 nitrogen in the course of replication one of the important criteria for the newer nucleotides to be added on as a part of the growing daughter strand is it has to be mandatorily following the watson and crick base pairing the rule follows that adenine always pairs with a thymine and a guanine always pairs with the cytosine that is that is a purine pairing with a pyrimidine only there are in a healthy structured dna there are no purine a uh, base pairing with the purines and a pyrimidines base pairing with the pyrimidines it is important to maintain the helical structure of the dna without without causing physical distortions one of the prime reasons that has been incorporated of not allowing the purines pairing with the purines or pyrimidines pairing with the pyrimidines because in either case the dna at certain positions would be too compressed or too exposed or much wider and it, it's going to lose the uniformity regarding the thickness or the width of the dna duplex so considering we are given a particular dna strand we can work out the sequence of the daughter strand that it's going to reproduce in that case if the sequence is has got the first nucleotide as an adenine 
the first nucleotide to be added on as a part of the daughter strand is going to be or should be thiamine. The, for the thiamine to be added on, the next nucleotide to be added on is going to be adenine. The same would go on for cytosine and guanine, guanine, and guanine. And it is going to continue with the last nucleotide to be added on is going to be a thiamine. The concept to understand in this case is the polarity of the DNA strand as well, which we'll be talking a little bit more in detail. But for the moment, the polarities of the parent strand is written as in the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime. The DNA duplex being anti-parallel, the polarity of the daughter strand is going to be in the direction of 3 prime to 5 direction specifically. Another prediction of the Watson Crick model of DNA replication is that a replication zipper or a fork that is found during the process of DNA replication. The fork is located at the position at which the DNA helix is unwound to produce the two daughter strands that serve as a template in copying. The process was proven in detail in 1963 by John Karens, which tested this prediction by allowing the replicating DNA in bacterial cells to produce the isotopic form of the thymidine that is containing the isotopic hydrogen or tritium. Theoretically, each newly synthesized daughter molecules should contain one of the radioactive strand containing the 3H and the another non-radioactive cold strand which contains the 2H. After varying rounds of DNA replication cycles in an isotopic medium, Kyrens carefully lysed the bacteria and allowed the cells to allow the cell contents to settle on a piece of paper and the samples were then radioautographed. The radio autograph basically the shows the, the isotopic form as the black spot or a grain. After one replication cycle in 3H medium, a ring of dot appears in the autoradiograph. The Cairns interpreted this ring as a newly formed radioactive strand in a circular daughter DNA molecule as shown in the figure A. It is then apparent that the bacterial chromosome is circular as well. <clears throat> in the second replication cycle, the force predicted by the model were indeed unseen, that is referred as the figure B. This structure, if uh, is observed, or this structure is initially referred as the theta model, and it is observed if the cells are continued to grow in the presence of the 3H hydrogen or the tritium molecule this time con containing the two of the radioactive strands that could be seen as a result of the growing daughter strands. Coming back to the next point, why the DNA replication only proceeds in the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime. The need for accuracy probably explains the concept or the process of the unidirectional mode of DNA replication. Considering if there were a DNA polymerase that adds a deoxyribonuclease triphosphates in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction, the growing 5 prime end of the chain rather than the incoming mononucleotide would have to provide the activating triphosphates needed for the covalent linkage. In this case, the mistakes in the polymerization could not be simply hydrolyzed away because the bare 5 prime end of the chain thus created would immediately terminate the concept or the process of DNA synthesis. It is therefore possible to correct a mismatched base only if it has been added at, do, added at the 3 prime end of the DNA chain. Although the backstitching mechanism or the repair mechanism for DNA replication seems complex, it preserves the 5 prime to 3 prime direction of polymerization that is required for the exonuclease proofreading activity. Assembly of the replisome in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes is an orderly process that begins at the precise site of the chromosome called origins and takes place only at certain times in the life of a cell. The prokaryotic origin of replication, E. coli replication, begins from a fixed origin called as orexi and then proceeds in both the directions as we have seen previously referring to the theta structure. It continues until the fox merge. The present figure shows the process. The first step in the assembly of the reprisome is the binding of a protein called as DNA A to a specific 13 base pair sequence called as DNA A box. 
it is repetitive five times in the orexi or that is what we refer as original replication in prokaryotes or the e coli in response to the dna a the origin is unwound at a cluster of 18 nucleotides if we can recall as per the watson and crick base pairing the 80 base pairs base pairs are held together by the two hydrogen bonds or double hydrogen bond as compared to the gc base pairs which are held together by uh, triple hydrogen bonds thus it is easier to separate or melt the double helix at the structures or the stretches of the dna that are at rich after unwinding begins the additional dna a protein binds to the newly unwound single stranded regions with dna a coating the origin two helices to helicases the dna b protein now binds and slide in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction beginning to unzip the helix at the replication fork primase and dna polymerase 3 hollow enzyme are now recruited to the replication fork by the protein protein interaction and dna synthesis begins the origin of the simple eukaryotes such as yeast are very much like orexi in the e coli the origin of replication in higher organisms however are not very well characterized but they are known to be much longer possibly as long as thousands or tens of thousands of nucleotides unlike prokaryotic chromosome each chromosome has many origin of replication in order to replicate much larger eukaryotic genomes quickly approximately 400 replication origins are dispersed throughout the 16 chromosomes of yeast and they are estimated to be thousands of growing forks in 23 chromosomes of humans thus in eukaryotes replication proceeds in both directions from the multiple points of origin the double helices are being produced at the end of each origin of replication as it elongates and eventually join one another when the replication of the two strands is complete two identical daughter molecules of the dna result unwinding of the double helix when a double helix was proposed in 1953 a major objection was that the replication of such a structure would require the unwinding of the double helix at the replication fork and the breaking of the hydrogen bonds that hold the strands together how could the dna be unwound so rapidly and if it could wouldn't that overwind the dna behind the replication fork considering it resembles a string that has been kept wound for a very long period of the time the replisome contains two classes of the proteins that open up the helix and prevents the unwinding these are helicases and topoisomerases respectively helicases are enzymes that disrupt the hydrogen bonds that hold the two strands of the double helix together it behaves like a clamp protein the helicase fits like a donut around the dna and from this position it rapidly unzips the double helix ahead of the dna synthesis the unwound dna is stabilized by single stranded binding protein which are also called as ssb proteins referred as a purple circles over here which bind to single stranded dna and prevent the duplex from reforming Circular DNA can be twisted and coiled much like the extra coils that can be introduced into a rubber band. Untwisting of the replication fork by helicases causes extra twisting at other regions and coils called as supercoiled forms to release the strain from extra twisting. Both the twist and the supercoils must be removed to allow replication to continue. This supercoiling can be created or relaxed by the enzymes called topoisomerases an example of which is a dna gyrase topoisomerases relax the supercoiled dna by breaking either a single stranded dna strand or both the strand which allows dna to rotate into a relaxed molecule topoisomerase finishes by rejoining the strands of the now relaxed dna molecule as the dna polymerase moves forward the double helix is continuously unwinding ahead of the enzyme to expose further lengths of the single DNA strand that will act as template. DNA polymerase acts at the replication fork, the zone where the double helix is unwinding. 
However, because DNA polymerase always adds a nucleotide at the three prime growing tip, the only one of the two antiparallel strands that serve as a template for the replication in the direction of the replication fork, considering the two strands are antiparallel to each other. The newly synthesized strand on the template, uh, which is in currently five prime to three prime direction, is called as the leading strand. Another concern in the process of DNA replication arises because DNA polymerase can extend a chain but cannot initiate the process of replication. Therefore, the synthesis of both the leading strand and each of the Okazaki fragments must be initiated by a primer or a short chain of nucleotides that bind with the template strand to form a segment of the duplex DNA. The primer in a DNA replication as shown in here are synthesized by a set of proteins called as primosome, of which the central component is an enzyme called as primase, which is a type of a DNA polymerase. A DNA a primase synthesizes a short, approximately 8 to 12 nucleotide stretch of the RNA complementary to a specific region of the chromosome. The first nucleotide polymerizing enzyme referred as DNA polymerase was discovered in 1957 by Arthur Kornberg. The free nucleotides that serve as a substrate for this enzyme were found to be deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates and their repolymerization into the DNA required a single stranded template. DNA polymerase catalyzes the stepwise addition of the deoxyribonucleotide to the 3' prime hydroxyl end of the polynucleotide chain, the growing primary strand that is paired to an existing template strand. The newly synthesized DNA strand therefore polymerizes in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction as shown in also in the previous figure. Because each incoming deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates must pair with the template strand to be recognized by the DNA polymerase, this strand determines which of the four new possible deoxyribonucleotide, that is either from A, T, G or C, will be added. The reaction driven is by large a favorable energy free change causes the release of pyrophosphates and subsequent hydrolysis of two molecules of inorganic phosphates. The structure of the DNA polymerase complexed with the DNA as referred with the, 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 the structure of the DNA polymerase as referred to the DNA strand present as the orange complex in here is determined by the X-ray crystallography. The template DNA strand is the longer strand and the newly synthesized DNA strand is the shorter one which is this one. The schematic diagram of the DNA polymerase based on the structure of this one, the proper base geometry of the correct base pairing, <coughs> the proper base pair of geometry of the correct incoming deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate causes the polymerase to tighten around the base pair, therefore initiating the nucleotide addition reaction. Dissociation of the pyrophosphate relaxes the polymerase, allowing the translocation of the DNA by one nucleotide so that the so that the active site or basically the DNA molecule can proceed further with respect to the addition of the further nucleotides as per the sequence of the template as soon as the template strand is ready to or basically exposes the three prime hydroxyl ends. The straightforward process of replication that we have sort of that is the unwounding by the topoisomerase and holding the strand used with the use of single stranded binding proteins and breaking of the hydrogen bonds by the protein helicase followed up by the initiation of the reaction of polymerization by primase and followed up by the DNA polymerase is a straightforward reaction that is followed on the template strand which is present in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction and the strand that is formed or the daughter strand that is formed in this reaction or is called as the leading strand. However, the same notion is or cannot be applied to the opposing strand which is 
present in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction. What we have to consider in our mind that the DNA duplex is an anti-parallel double stranded structure. So the process of polymerization that we have discussed so far is linearly applicable to the strand present in a 5 prime but for the strand to be duplicated that is present in 3 prime to 5 prime direction we need to work out certain alternate strategies. The nature of the replication machine we require that synthesis of both the strands take place in the region of the replication fork simultaneously. However, since one of the strands is present in an opposing direction or an opposing polarity that is 3 prime to 5 prime, it requires a partial coiling of the strand that is present in a 3 prime to 5 prime direction so that it can accommodate the synthesis moving away from the growing fork and not go on on a longer run. However, for the lagging strand, which we, is the one present in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction, it must be in shorter segments. Polymerase synthesizes a segment that moves back to the segment at the 5 prime end where the growing fork has exposed a newer template and begins the process strand. These shorter 1000 to 2000 nucleotide stretches of newly synthesized strands are called as Okazaki fragments. However, on the lagging strand, every Okazaki fragment needs its own primer. The RNA chain opposing the primer is then extended as the DNA chain by the DNA polymerase. As the process of DNA replication proceeds further, a specified DNA polymerase which is referred as DNA polymerase 1 removes the RNA primers and fills the resulting gap with the DNA sequences. As mentioned earlier, polymerase 1 is also an enzyme that is originally purified by Arthur Kornberg. Another enzyme, DNA ligase, joins the 3' prime ends of the gap filling the DNA to the 5' prime end of the Okazaki fragment. The new strand thus formed is called as the lagging strand. The lagging strand is the one which used the 3' prime to 5' prime directed template as uh, or the strand as its own template and synthesized the daughter strand in smaller bits which we refer as Okazaki fragments. DNA ligase joins broken pieces by DNA catalyzing the formation of phosphodiester bond between the 5 phosphate and of one of the fragment and the adjacent 3 prime OH of the another fragment. Now talking about the DNA, the process of DNA replication as a whole. The origin of replication is identified by specific proteins which we call as DNA A and are, are accompanied by an AT rich region that facilitates the original, original unwounding based on the double hydrogen bonds. The unwounding of the DNA helix is facilitated by a specific class of enzyme which we call as topoisomerases. Then unwound the DNA, DNA duplex and the unwound strands are held in place together by specific proteins which we refer as single stranded binding proteins. The hydrogen bonds are broken by a class of enzyme which we call as helicases and once the helicase breaks the hydrogen bond, it exposes the nucleotides that serve as a template for the synthesis of the daughter strand. The process of the DNA replication is straightforward on the strand which is present in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. The only concern is the DNA polymerase which is a polymerizing enzyme does not have the capacity to initiate the process of replication. It can only polymerize and in that case, we require the help of a further enzyme which is an RNA polymerase based enzyme called as the primase and this enzyme synthesizes a shorter stretch of the nucleotides approximately 18 to 22 base pairs and this stretch is then carried further or polymerase polymerized by the enzyme which we call as DNA polymerase. This is the straightforward process that goes on the template present in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. However, for the template that is present in 3 prime to 5 prime direction, an alternate strategy is parallelly used. Since the template can only be polymerized if present in 5 prime to 3 prime direction, the region is temporarily coiled to give a 5 prime to 3 prime orientation. A stretch is synthesized 
in a similar manner by the RNA polymerase or the primase and continued with the DNA polymerase. However, this process needs to be repeated again and again and on the lagging strand or the strand that is present in 3 prime to 5 prime direction, the DNA or the daughter strand is synthesized in smaller stretches which we call as Okazaki fragments. After or as the DNA replication proceeds, DNA polymerase 1 goes back, removes the stretch that was synthesized by the RNA polymerase and replaces it with a stretch of the DNA molecule. This, resu this results in the formation or the creation of a smaller gap or next which are sealed by a specific enzyme called as the DNA ligase. It continues until the origin of replication uh, proceeds and meets the next origin of replication and a complete daughter strand is synthesized. The present figure is a similar illustration of the process that we have just talked about. However, this basically clears or uh, in detail when we talking when we were talking about the temporarily coiling of the lagging strand to align the two strands to be present both in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction so that it can proceed further. It would continue until it meets the next origin of replication. This leads to our second set of questions that uh, we would need to answer in. How much or how many times do we think a DNA is replicated throughout the life of a cell? When, since when we talk about the life of the cell, that is a conversion or the uh, basically the duplication of one parental, DNA, uh, parental cell into the two daughter cells, the DNA is replicated only once during the life of the cell, that is the S phase of the cell cycle. The process of replication that we have uh, talked about in detail as per now applies equally or is well conserved in all the eukaryotes and prokaryotes as well. However, there are certain minor differences. Primarily, the complexity of the process and the regulatory enzymes that are present um, for, the, for the replication process. Along with that, the eukaryotes contain multiple origin of replication as compared to the prokaryotes and the individual origin of replications are spaced at an intervals of approximately 30,000 to 300,000 base pairs. The Okazaki fragments in eukaryotes are approximately 200 base pairs as compared to the 1,000 to 2,000 base pairs in prokaryotes. The replication fork, however, is much faster in prokaryotic system as compared to the eukaryotes, again involving the complexity of the proteins required for the process in eukaryotic uh, replication machinery. The replication fork travels approximately at a speed of 50 base pairs per second in the eukaryotes. To summarize the concept of the DNA replication process, it is a well-conserved process that is essential for the survival of every living cell, let it be prokaryotes or the eukaryotes. It is an essential process that results in the formation of the 
daughter duplex DNA is and happens only in the one only once in the life of the cell that is in the S phase of the cell cycle. DNA replication is a semi-conservative process carried forward by the DNA polymerase enzyme which is an essential proofreading activity and follows the Watson and Crick base pairing. Thank you students. I guess that was all with respect to the process of the well conserved cross method of DNA replication. I will be happy to answer any of the further queries if you have got any.